Welcome to Timeless Tales, History and Folklore. I'm Dayanara, your host. If you're intrigued by tales, history and folklore, whether imaginary or real, subscribe and press the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. Worldwide, every culture seems to be intrigued by dragon tales and folklore. Because of this, they're seen differently in all parts of the world. First, let's talk about what a dragon is and how they're perceived. In European Western mythology, dragons are depicted as giant-winged, mythical-flying, fire-breathing reptilian monsters. They have a long barbed tail, two to four legs with massive claws, who are regarded as destructive and evil. They're seen as malevolent creatures, often guarding treasure, a virgin maiden, or princess, and have to be slain by a hero, serving as a testament to their courage. In recent years, dragons have taken on a more positive light, which is reflected in modern Western cinema and television series. In the Middle East, dragons were extravagant and diverse with large serpent-like bodies, while others exhibited chimera-like characteristics. They were seen as a symbol of evil power. They ranged from trickster spirits to semi-divine monsters through evil gods representing chaos. On occasion, they were seen as beneficent as dwellers of inner earth. In Christianity, the dragon has always been portrayed as a representation of paganism, evil, and sin. In the Bible, they're portrayed as the primal enemy of God and mankind. In the Old Testament, the dragon is subject to God's destruction but reappears in the New Testament in Revelations at the end of time, when the dragon is finally and at long last destroyed. When looking at Christian art, you can find them depicted underfoot, being crushed by martyrs, saints, and angels. In East Asia, they are depicted as serpent-like creatures, some flowing through the air, while others are a variety that swim in the ocean. They are seen as prestigious, auspicious symbols of fertility and good fortune. They can alter the weather and summon the rain. The Chinese dragon lung represents yang, the principle of heaven, activity, and masculinity in the yin-yang of Chinese cosmology. When looking at the serpentine Asian version, they remind us of spermatic fluid in movement and appearance. They're important mythical creatures in Chinese culture, appearing in national celebrations as well as being part of the Chinese zodiac. They are revered, loved, and worshipped. From ancient times, the dragon appeared on the crest of the imperial family up until 1911, when the Chinese Republic was established. Chinese and Japanese dragons are wingless and regarded as powers of air. Dragons are also prominent figures in India, Korea, Vietnam, and Thailand. In studying dragons in both Western and Eastern traditions, they were initially portrayed as serpentine creatures who were seen as gods or agents of God. With the arrival of Christianity in Western culture, the view of dragons evolved to associations of evil, demons, and Satan. The one theme that's similar in all cultures is that dragons are associated with the elements. Greek dragons are associated with earth and water, while medieval dragons are associated with earth and fire. East Asians associate dragons with air, water, or both. 
Now, why are dragons represented in different ways in so many cultures throughout the world and human history? Many academics have theorized that dragons are an amalgam of the danger that would have preyed upon our ancestors. It's supposed to be a combination of snakes threatening us on the ground, hawks attacking us from the sky, and large cats hunting us out of the bush. These animals represent the animals that would kill us unexpectedly. It's believed that it was natural for humans to combine these predators into a mega predator, representing extreme danger and our encounter with them bringing us to our end. As human beings, we inherit a knowledge of predators, such as things that slink, stalk, and fly. We naturally experience fears that are both primal and universal. The image of a snake is powerful and terrifying because it is and was critical that we avoid them for our own survival. Now, could this fear of serpents date back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the consequences of that encounter? Anything is possible, but that's a conversation and a video for another day. Perhaps, just as it is naturally instinctive to breathe, to blink, or to suckle, perhaps similarly is ingrained the fear of dangerous animals. Jordan Peters theorizes that dragon representations in every culture is the result of an amalgam of our primal fears representing all things that can hurt or kill us. It shows us that even when human beings have no contact with one another, that we are more alike in our beliefs just by being human. We similarly experience fear, wants, and needs. The dragon represents that which scares us most and what we must overcome. Others theorize that dragons are real and actually exist in a spiritual realm, thus why they exist in all cultures such as the angels do. It is believed that their purpose is to serve God and spread love, wisdom, and light. They have the ability to travel effortlessly between dimensions. Their sleek bodies allows them to pierce and easily glide through space. The love beaming from their hearts forms their etheric wings. They are said to be old and wise. Their crowns are so developed that often they seem to have more than one head. They seem to align with high-ranking angels, such as the seraphim depicting six wings. Seraphim hearts radiate love so unimaginable that their brilliant auras create these majestic wings. They are said to vibrate on the fourth, fifth, and seventh dimensions. Dragons can dive right into dark and murky places, breathing out etheric fire while transmuting the dense energies into love and healing. Spiritual dragons are the masters of clearing these energies. It's believed that they were involved in the creation of Earth. Dragons work extremely hard along the elementals in order to make our planet a wondrous haven of beauty. I honor the dragon because it is magical. They are guardians of the Earth, us and its treasures. They're highly intelligent. If you're a healer, they are the totem animal to guide you to your healing gifts. They bring harmony, balance, and good fortune into your life. They rule all the elements and for me have always been a positive omen. Whether you believe in dragons or not, or whether you believe they're good or evil, we understand that in every aspect of our human lives, Duality and opposing forces always exist, including in our perceptions. The influence of our upbringing, our peers, and where we live in the world can impact those beliefs. 
You could never fully understand anything, including yourself, without comparing and understanding the opposing side. Good and bad is one of many polarities that constitute reality as we perceive it to be. The balance of our world and the universe depends on it. It is in our nature to label certain concepts, things or dragons in this case, as good or evil. Our fear of the unknown doesn't allow for inconsistencies in our own perceptions of reality. Cultural representation is one way we perceive what dragons symbolize within our own minds. Either way, dragons inspire both joy and fear, pride and terror, but all truths are half-truths and every truth is half-false. There are two sides to everything. Opposites are identical in nature, yet different in degree. Challenge is a dragon with a gift in its mouth. Tame the dragon and the gift is yours. Let me know what your thoughts are on dragons. Do you view them as good or evil? Do you revere them or do you fear them? What are your feelings and thoughts about them? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.